Hi and welcome back. Today we'll be making an edge grain hard maple purple heart cutting board. It'll be approximately 14 and a half inches wide by 11 and a half inches long and a quarter, one and a quarter inch tall. Today's project starts off with approximately three and a half board feet of hard maple and then one board foot of purple heart. Now I got these boards a while ago and I kept trying to go back and forth on what size I was going to make the cuts, but I ended up making them 19 inches and then that gave me plenty of room for waist and then also plenty of room to screw it up at the end. Now you can see here I got these boards semi straight but they didn't have a clean edge on both sides so what I did is I put it up against the straightest edge up against my fence and then went ahead and ripped it down to get the one side clean. Once I did that I flipped it around and then did the same thing again. I'll continue that process with the rest of the hard maple and then I didn't have to do this to the purple heart because it was dimensional lumber. After I have all the edges straight for the hard maple, I'll run it through my planer just to make sure that everything's flat. It's a lot easier to do this now and cut the strips than do it later and have a board that is a little bit rocky. Now with the cutting board I'm making today, I was able to get three strips of wood out of each piece and you can see in the upper corner there that I have a few more boards to run through of maple. So I'll continue to cut that and then we'll move on to the purple heart. You can see on this last cut that I'll have a little piece left over of the hard maple, which this is kind of a bonus because I'll be able to use that for a future project for my runner because it fits just in between my slots on my table saw. With the purple heart we'll only need two strips because these will be accents on the top and the bottom of the board. Because I want the purple heart to be thinner than the hard maple, I'll go ahead and resaw this so each one will be sawed in half. Now that we have our parts and pieces, we'll go ahead and lay out the design we want and we'll flip over all the boards so that the face is exposed and we'll start gluing it up. And you want to use a liberal amount of glue here because you want to make sure you have a good contact and good pressure, good squeeze out, that way your board will stay together. I'm using Type Bond 3 here too because it's waterproof and it's also safe for indirect food contact. I'll go ahead and tighten up my pipe clamps and then I'll add some more clamps on the tops, the bottoms, and the sides. That way I get equal pressure throughout the whole board and get a nice good squeeze out. Now it doesn't need to be perfect here because we are going to true it up and plane it down some bit after the glue dries. Before setting it through my planer, I'll just use this putty knife and clean up any of the glue I can. Now 
Now what you don't see here is that every time I'm playing in a down, I'm taking it over to my table saw because that's the flattest surface I have in my shop and just making sure that everything is true and the board doesn't rock. And I flip it over and then I test it again. The final dimension we're going here is one and a quarter, so I'll plan it down to that thickness. Using my crosscut sled, I'll go ahead and clean up the ends. That way everything will be square and perfect. Using my palm router with a chamfer bit, I will go ahead and start with the exposed end grain just because I get, might get some tear out on the sides and that way I can fix it when I go down the sides and then continue along with the project. Next comes the fun part, sanding. And more sanding and more sanding. You'll see a short clip here because I didn't want to bore you with all the sanding. So once that's all done, you'll be able to apply some butcher oil and now you'll see it come to life. This is probably the best part and most satisfying. When you wipe that on, just look at the maple and the purple heart glow.